For nearly a year now, Samsung has been hyping up a new XR headset, which was previously known simply as Project Muham. Now, finally, we know everything there is to know about the device, which is officially called the Galaxy XR. The big question though, is whether or not you will actually buy it. And let me tell you a secret. I think Samsung isn't expecting you to buy it. But before I get deep into what Samsung wants or doesn't want from you, let me give you a rundown on what this product is. As you can see, the device hasn't changed all that much from when it was first shown off as a prototype. But really, it's pretty simple. A headset that you wear on your face and a battery pack that you can keep in your pocket. There's one button on the top right and a volume rocker on the top left. It was comfortable to wear, and it comes with light blockers that can help you be more immersed in your content by blocking off your peripheral vision. Galaxy XR represents an unprecedented collaboration between three of the biggest companies in tech, Samsung, Google, and Qualcomm. Samsung was tasked with building the hardware, Google built the software, and Qualcomm made the silicon. But all three companies worked together to make every aspect of the Galaxy XR work the best that it possibly can. At its core, the Galaxy XR is simply a VR headset with multiple opportunities for entertainment. You can game on it through pretty much every service that isn't proprietary. That includes nearly every game on the Google Play Store, PC VR games you can buy on Steam, traditional 2D games from Steam and other stores, and there will even be a few new games coming to Google Play that were specifically designed for this particular product. You have a wealth of choices for controllers. You can buy traditional VR controllers made specifically for the Galaxy XR, use some third-party VR controllers, or just Bluetooth a standard gaming controller to it. Unfortunately, the Galaxy XR controllers do not come with the headset. Outside of gaming, you've also got immersive video content from multiple platforms. YouTube will have immersive videos catered to this viewing format, and in the near future, it will automatically convert some two-dimensional videos to be optimized for headset viewing. I had the chance to see this on one of my own videos from my solo channel, and it definitely looks stereoscopic, but it was only maybe 90% there. So that's probably why Google is holding it back until after the launch. Anyway, Netflix will have stereoscopic movies that you can actually interact with, almost like a hybrid between a story-driven video game and a Hollywood blockbuster. And sports leagues will put you directly into games with immersive video content, including those from the NBA. All of this is super cool, but these are all things you can do on multiple competitor devices, including the Meta Quest, which is probably the most popular headset on the market right now. So. What sets the Galaxy XR apart? The two most significant differences are the operating system and the deep integration of Google's Gemini. Let's start with the operating system, which is called Android XR. As its name suggests, this is based on Android, so it works very similarly to what you've been using on your phones and tablets for nearly two decades. It comes preloaded with many of the standard Google apps, including Maps, YouTube, Google Photos, the Chrome browser, and more. You can use these apps in the same way that you would on your phone, but instead of physically tapping on things, you use pinches in the air through the magic of hand tracking. Outside the headset, there are multiple cameras and sensors that track everything your hands do in real time. This allows you to manipulate things in your VR environment without needing to hold a controller or have any sort of apparatus on your hands or wrists. Inside the headset, there are even more cameras and sensors that track your eye movements. With all of this combined, you can look at things in the VR world, pinch to tap them, pinch to grab them, zoom in and out with two pinches, or use various other gestures to control things. There are also opportunities for augmented reality experiences. The real world can be projected into the headset in full color with very low latency. Using circle to search, you could circle pretty much anything in the real world and do a search for it. Of course, you probably wouldn't be caught dead wearing this around town, but it is fully wireless, so if you wanted, you could do that. Otherwise, you'll be circling to search things in your home or maybe on your TV. Like I said earlier, nearly every app and game on the Play Store will automatically work with the Galaxy XR because it is based on Android. All it will do is present the app in its native format in a 2D window within the headset, and you can use it as normal. Some apps, though, will offer unique experiences that only work when you're using the Galaxy XR. Google Maps is the best example of this. 
If you want to explore a new area, you can virtually fly over it to see everything with a bird's eye view. When you find something you want to investigate more deeply, you can soar down to it and even virtually walk around the area to explore it as if you were really there. Google is even offering the ability to explore interior spaces like restaurants and museums. The cool thing about this feature is that it doesn't need to rely on information obtained from specific areas for this purpose. Using publicly available photos and videos on the Maps platform, Google can use AI to essentially stitch together a reconstruction of the interior that you can walk around in and explore. In New York City alone, there are over a thousand of these places that you can explore when you first take the Galaxy XR out of the box. We do have a lot of unanswered questions about Android XR though. Will it be available to any company that wants to make a headset, just like Android is available to any company that wants to make a phone? How much will companies be able to customize it and skin it to match their branding? How often will those devices get security updates? Will there be yearly upgrades to new Android XR versions? What about quarterly XR drops or something similar? I asked a Google rep about this and they said they'd announce it all in due time, but for now, anyway, that's the operating system. But what about Gemini? When Google first announced the existence of Android XR, it called it the first operating system developed from the ground up with AI in mind. That basically means that Gemini is not only an included tool with the Galaxy XR, but is being presented as the key way that Google and Samsung want you to use the headset's various features. The fact that the headset doesn't come with controllers only proves this point more. Google wants you to use your hands and your voice for controls all the time. But Gemini really is everywhere in the headset. You can trigger it from any screen by holding down the button at the top right of the headset. Let's say you're virtually walking around and spot a landmark or interesting object. You can simply look at it and ask Gemini about it, and the AI will tell you whatever you want to know. If you're exploring a restaurant, you can ask about the menu. If you're exploring a city park, you can ask if there are any playgrounds for your kids. Let's say you're playing a game. You can ask Gemini for tips on strategies or to explain core gameplay features. Gemini can see whatever it is you're looking at in the headset, so you don't need to explain what game you're playing, what level you're at, or anything else. Just ask as if the AI were sitting right next to you watching along as you play. Gemini can even help you with menial tasks. For example, if you have a bunch of windows open within your virtual environment, you can simply ask Gemini to organize them for you. The really cool thing about all these Gemini interactions is that you don't need to say anything like, hey Gemini. Most of the time you'll be using Gemini Live, so you can just have a normal conversation. For the organization thing, you could just casually say, my desktop is a mess, can you organize it for me Gemini? While you're exploring a place in Google Maps, you can just say, this restaurant looks good, Gemini. Can you tell me more about the menu? Based on my experience with the Galaxy XR, I think Google is envisioning Gemini as being the main way you use this headset. Yes, the hand tracking and eye tracking technology is super cool, and the fact that you can connect all manner of physical controllers makes the device have a versatility that some other headsets simply don't offer. But Gemini was involved with pretty much everything Google and Samsung showed off at the launch event. Of course, saying that brings up the thing I've avoided mentioning this entire time, which is the Apple Vision Pro. That $3,500 headset does a lot of the same things as the Galaxy XR, but it doesn't have that deep AI integration. The Vision Pro also doesn't work with controllers very well. While it is possible to connect controllers to it and play games, doing so is not straightforward, and Apple clearly doesn't want you to use the product in that way. Well, the Samsung Galaxy XR does all those things really well and at literally half the price. The Galaxy XR starts at $1,799, severely undercutting the Vision Pro. To sweeten the deal, Google and Samsung are offering a slew of freebies for early adopters, including free year-long subscriptions to things like YouTube Premium, Google AI Pro, Google Play Pass, and more. There are even YouTube TV freebies and months-long subscriptions to third-party apps specifically designed for the headset. With all that said, you might conclude that Samsung really wants you to buy the Galaxy XR. While it clearly wants to sell as many of these as possible, since it is a business after all, it was also made clear to me at the keynote presentation that the sales failure of the Apple Vision Pro is hanging heavy over this launch. This is one of the few launches I've ever been to in which the presenters actively told us that this product is just the beginning and that better things are on the way. Of course, what Samsung was referring to there is what everyone actually wants, which is smart glasses powered by Android XR. 
The Galaxy XR seems like a terrific product, but it's still, at its core, just another VR headset. Although this has a lot of cool tricks up its sleeve, I can only imagine that 99% of people who buy this will use it to play games, watch movies, and maybe experiment a bit with the Google Maps thing. But they'll do this in their homes, or maybe on a plane, and they'll do it by themselves. They might use it once or twice a week, if that. There's nothing wrong with this, but it certainly doesn't add up to a device that changes your life. And that adds up to a TV screen that you attach to your face. The real revolution will be smart glasses that do most of the things the Galaxy XR can do, but do it in the real world. Yes, Meta Ray-Bans currently offer a lot of cool smart glasses features, but Android XR is already head and shoulders above Meta's operating system, and it's not even out yet. If Google and Samsung can make smart glasses that allow you to bring Android XR with you wherever you go and include an AI companion that can jump in and help you whenever needed, it could have a revolution on its hands. We know this is coming too because Samsung and Google are already talking about it. At the keynote, both companies talked about partnerships with Warby Parker and Gentle Monster, and we've already seen Google demonstrate what its Android XR glasses will be able to do. And ultimately, that future is what hung over the Galaxy XR event. Obviously, the Galaxy XR is not a prototype anymore. It's a real device you can buy and use. But Samsung, Google, and Qualcomm likely aren't expecting to sell many of these. A $1,800 product that only does a few things more than what other, much cheaper products do isn't a win. And even Apple found it hard to break into this market. And busting up existing markets and claiming they invented it is what Apple does best. So the question then becomes, will you buy the Galaxy XR? or? Will you wait for the real revolution, which will be future smart glasses with Android XR on board? Jump down in the comments and let us know. See you all later.